Hey guys, my name is Emily, if you haven't seen my face before, and today I'm going to be making a video on Dua Fragrances. So this is a perfume brand that is kind of known for being a dupe house. They do a lot of inspirations of a lot of very popular perfumes and fragrances, usually stuff that's more high-end and really expensive, so they offer a little bit more of an affordable option, but they also have a lot of their own original fragrances, and personally, I am a really big fan of perfume. As of lately, I've really been getting into it, and I have discovered the Dua brand just kind of by watching different people talk about them on YouTube, and I have never tried it before. So this video is going to be kind of like a first impressions, but I have also sprayed all of these scents on me at least once, so I have a little bit of an idea of what these smell like. Before I get into anything else in this video, I just want to point out that this video is not sponsored. I bought these with my own money because I was just really interested in trying different fragrances from this brand. And these are all going to be my own personal opinions. Just because I don't like a fragrance doesn't mean that you wouldn't, and vice versa, everyone has different tastes. And I just want to throw that out there before I really got into the video. So I have looked on their website a little bit, and I've noticed that most of their scents come in 30 mil vials, and that's kind of like their full size. They don't really offer a whole lot of really big bottles. They do have some, but most of them are 30 mils. But they are all perfume extracts, which you can see right there. So they are stronger concentrations. So ideally, you wouldn't need to spray as much because it's stronger, so the bottles should last you longer. I think that's kind of the idea behind having 30 mil perfumes instead of having really big bottles like 100 mils because I guess you would use it less and it would last you a bit longer. But they do also offer a lot of 10 mil vials, which is what I bought. So I bought five of the 10 mil vials, which is kind of like their travel size. And they come in a little travel size vial, which I will show you guys, of course. And they come in this little white box that opens up and the scent is inside. I have taken out all of the scents to wear them, of course, but this is kind of what the box looks like that the miniature sizes come in. So I got five of these and I also got six samples that I bought separately from a decant website that I will leave in the description below because I wanted to try some more scents and I wasn't really confident whether or not I would like them. So I wanted to try them in a smaller vial than the 10 mil vial. So I will, of course, leave all of the links down below and let's just jump right in to what I got. So I am going to start with the samples and all the samples that I got are three mil samples and they came in little vials like this with the label right on there and of course the perfume inside and these are spray samples. They're not roll on so you can just spray it right on which I love. The first one that I wanna talk about is actually the only one that I really don't like out of the samples that I got. And this one is called High on Chocolate. So High on Chocolate is a inspiration fragrance inspired by Chocolate Makes Me Happy by Unique's Luxury, I think is what the brand is called. So before I tell you guys what this smells like, I wanna give you guys the notes. So the notes for this one are Cacao Pod, Dark Chocolate, Lavender, Mandarin Orange, Grapefruit, I'm gonna butcher some of these, honestly, because I don't even know what some of these are. Ginger, benzoin, labdanum, don't know what that is, cinnamon, frankincense, amber accord, caramel, musk, sandalwood, and vetiver. This one, to me, unfortunately, like I said, I don't like it. I was really hoping to because I am a chocolate lover. I actually love gourmand scents. I love sweet fragrances. I like the powdery sweets. I like the fruity sweets. I like gourmand sweets. I really like scents that are feminine and sweet. I'm not a fan of florals, unfortunately. I just can't really stand them. If something is just purely floral, chances are I won't like it. If there's a lot of fruitiness in there, then I might like it, but I lean more toward the sweet stuff and I just wanted to point that out there. What I get is this initial dark chocolate, but it's really overpowered by like incense kind of smells, which I'm not a fan of, unfortunately. And this one, honestly, I have not used that much of this. I wore it once on my wrist and I had to go take a shower because I couldn't stand the smell of it on me. I am not a fan of this one at all, personally, but you may like it. It's just not really for me. I don't really feel like it's that gourmand of a scent. To me, it's a lot more smoky in incense -y. I don't really get a lot of sweetness from this one, unfortunately. So this one is my least favorite out of all of the ones I'm gonna talk about. So I just wanted to get this one out of the way 
pretty quickly. By the way, I don't own any of the originals of the scents I'm talking about, so I can't really compare them to how close they are to the originals, but I still just am not really a fan of this one, so I wouldn't really recommend this one in particular. This is a unisex fragrance, but to me there isn't really anything in it that would make it leaning towards feminine at all, so maybe if you do like more masculine scents, this one might be better for you. Next up, I have Rainbow Sherbet Ice Cream. This one I have used quite a bit of, and this one, it's really bizarre to me how much this smells like the name. It smells really, really good. I'm gonna post a little picture on the screen of the one that I'm talking about, but there's a certain sorbet that I have tried and I love, I'm a big fan of it, and this smells exactly like it, it's crazy. This is a unisex scent and it's also a gourmand. So the notes in this one are raspberry puree, lime juice, orange juice, milk, cream, sugar, unsweetened ice cream accord, white musk, and ambroxan, which I'm not too sure what that last one is. I can really smell the raspberry, I can smell the lime and I can smell the orange flavor. I can smell all three of those and it's just really, really good. So this one, if you are not a fan of sweet scents, I would not recommend this at all because it is so, so sweet. It's not too sweet though. If you do like sweet scents, I think this one is lovely. I'm kind of contemplating whether or not I want to buy a 30 ml vial of this because I really like it, but I just want to see if I like other ones more. This definitely seems more of like a summer scent to me and we are in the colder months right now. So I'm going to keep my eye on this and we will see. So I would definitely recommend Rainbow Sherbet Ice Cream for those of you who do like those sweet scents because this one is exactly that. That one was also an original scent, so it's not a dupe of any existing scent out there. Up next, I have Coco Licious. This one is a little bit darker and I've used a little bit less than half of this one. This one is also a Dua original, so it's not based off of anything. This one is unisex and it's listed as a fruity floral. For the notes on this one, we have coconut flesh, peach, ylang ylang, tiara flower, coconut suntan lotion accord, which is interesting, tuberose, almond, sandalwood, and coconut musk. So this one to me, it really does smell like suntan lotion. If you aren't a fan of coconut scents, I don't think you would like this one. Obviously it's called Coco Licious. I think this does lean feminine and it really does smell like sunscreen with floral notes in it. I can smell that coconut beachiness that you get whenever you put on suntan lotion or sunscreen and I really like that smell, but the florals for me, I'm not really sure about honestly because again, I'm not a huge floral person, but I absolutely love coconut scents. Coconuts are one of my favorite notes in perfumes. I love coconut gourmands. They are so, so good and I'm a huge fan of them. And I really wish this one didn't have as many floral notes as there are in this or that they were a little bit less strong. I don't think I would buy a full bottle of this just because I don't really care for those floral notes. But if you don't mind florals and you love coconuts, I think this one would be a great one for you. If you really love the smell of sunscreen, this is a good one. Next up, I have Strawberry Daiquiri. This one I haven't used too much. I've worn it a couple times. This one is listed as a unisex gourmand as well, and it is an original blend. The notes in this one are lime juice, strawberry puree, strawberry syrup, whipped cream, white rum, and white musk. The white rum kind of takes over the strawberry notes. So I can barely smell any strawberry, unfortunately, because I feel like I would have really liked this one if that alcohol note wasn't as strong. But if you do really like that kind of alcoholy vibe in your sweet scents, I think this one would be a good one for you. It's just personally not my favorite, but it's not bad. If you like those notes, then I would give this one a try anyways. I think this one also leans a bit more feminine. Up next, I have Aphrodisiac Drowned in Vanilla. So this one is inspired by two different fragrances, and those two ones are Ani by Nishani and Psychedelic Love by Initio Parfum. So I have heard of Ani. I have not smelt it, but I know it's a very popular vanilla scent. This one is also a unisex gourmand, if you're noticing a little bit of a trend here. So the notes in this one, there are quite a few. I'm guessing it is because it is a hybrid. The notes are ginger, bergamot, pink pepper, green notes, cardamom, which I usually love in fragrances, black currant, Turkish rose, Bulgarian rose, Mir or Meyer, not too sure about that one, Ylang Ylang, Vanilla, Sandalwood, Benzoin, Cedarwood, Patchouli, Heliotrope, Hedione, 
Ambergris, no clue about that one, and Musk. But hey guys, so unfortunately the rest of the video actually wasn't recording audio, so I'm going to refilm this part. It is a little bit later in the night though, so the lighting definitely is different. I'm sorry about that guys, but we're just gonna hop right in to where we cut off. So we are talking about Miss Aphrodisiac Drand in Vanilla, and this one to me, it smells really masculine when I sniff it. And whenever I spray it, it hits me with this really masculine, spicy earthiness that I'm not the biggest fan of. It smells really, really masculine on me when I first spray it. But once it dries down, it turns into this really interesting vanilla, and I really like that dry down. So I'm not really too sure, honestly, how I feel about this one because I don't like the opening of it. But as it dries down, that warm, spicy vanilla to me is feminine. This one is more of a complex vanilla, I'd say. There's a lot going on in there. So if you are a fan of more complex vanillas and you like that warmness, I feel like this would be awesome for winter and fall. So it'd be perfect really right now. And if you like that kind of stuff, I think this one would be great, honestly. As long as you don't mind that more masculine opening. And the last sample that I have is Alexandra Short. This one I have used quite a bit. This one is my favorite out of all of the samples I have. So this one is, I think, a collab with Alexandra Short. The way that it's listed on the website is a little bit different. So this one, the notes are bergamot peel, caramelized vanilla sugar, vanilla musk, Turkish rose, vanilla cake, whipped cream, vanilla musk, and white musk. There's a lot of vanillas going on in there. So this is very much a vanilla fragrance and I absolutely love it. I'm actually trying to decide between this one and Vanilla 28 by Kayali, which one I want to buy a full bottle of because I love both of them. And I need to test them side by side a little bit more before I make a decision, but this one just smells so good. Like a warm, sexy vanilla that has sweetness in it with that whipped cream. There's there's nothing I don't like about it, honestly. Every note in there that I smell just smells so good. It's this perfect blend of just sweet vanilla goodness, and I am a huge fan of this. Honestly, I'd wear this all year round, so this one is a winner for sure. This one doesn't have a listing on it to say whether or not it's gourmand or unisex, but I think it definitely would be considered a unisex gourmand that leans more feminine. On to our 10 mil vials, which are bought directly from the Duo website. This is what the packaging looks like of the vials. They are pretty simple and they have the name listed on a little sticker on the back there. And these ones are also spray bottles. I'll show you guys what the mist looks like. It's a very nice spray, I really like it. I did not pick a very good one to spray because that one is not my favorite. <laughs> this one is Miss Congeniality. This is inspired by Delina Exclusif by Parfum de Marly. I do know that that is a very popular perfume. Many people love it. And this is listed as a feminine scent and it is a fruity floral. And the notes in this one are bergamot, lychee, pear, oud, Turkish rose, amber, vanilla, and sandalwood. This one to me smells like pure floral perfume. I was hoping I would like it just because I know how popular this is. I can smell it in the air really strongly. It takes up a whole room. I am not a fan of this one in the slightest. I can't pick up any fruity notes in this. I just get pure floral flower balm. I can't, I can't deal with the floralness of this. This is like headache inducing for me. But if you are a fan of florals, I think you would enjoy this. Okay, our lighting was looking a little bit rough. So I pulled in some more lights. Hopefully it's a little bit better now. But anyways, Miss Congeniality does seem like it would be a really pretty scent if you do like florals, but personally, it's not for me. Next up, we have Mirinella Delight or Mirinella. I'm not too sure how you pronounce Mir or Mir. I'm not too sure. This one is listed as a inspiration by Mir and Tonka by Joe Malone, and it is a unisex oriental. So the notes in this one are pretty straightforward. We have lavender, Mir, Tonka bean, and almond. So there's not too many notes in here. This one to me is a very sweet smelling lavender. If you are a big lavender fan, I think you would absolutely love this one. Personally, lavender is hit or miss for me. It really depends on the day. I really like wearing lavender scents if I'm going to sleep and it really puts me in that relaxing mood. It's not something I would typically wear every day, that kind of thing, because it is still a floral scent, but it is a floral scent that I can kind of tolerate, if that makes sense. So for what it is, I have worn this a couple times and I definitely was a fan of it. It wasn't something that I think I would buy a full bottle of, but I think I would wear this every now and then if I do want that lavender scent. I think this would be a great option for that. This one is also a very pretty fragrance. It definitely pulls feminine to me 
and it's just very simple. It's not a very complex scent, but at the same time, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it does what it does. It does what it's designed to do. It smells really pretty. And overall, I would recommend this one. Next up, I have Cherry by the Fire. This one was inspired by Tom Ford's Lost Cherry and by the Fireplace by Replica, I believe. So this is a, another hybrid. And this one is listed as a unisex oriental floral, which is quite interesting. I wouldn't really choose to label it as that, but that is what it is. So there is black cherry, bitter almond, cherry liqueur, clove oil, griotal syrup, jasmine, samber, chestnut accord, Turkish rose, Peru balsam, vanilla accord, Canadian vetiver, cedarwood, roasted tonka, and sandalwood. This one to me smells very, very smoky. But I also pick up that cherry note. It's almost a very syrupy kind of cherry. I feel like this is the closest to unisex out of all of them that I've talked about today. And it is very interesting. I feel like this is a perfect scent for fall and winter. So right now, this is a great one to have. Personally, I feel like it pulls a little bit too unisex for my liking. I would have liked it to be a little bit more sweet. I wouldn't buy a full bottle of this, but I will still definitely get my use out of this one. I feel like it would be a really nice date night, cozy kind of vibe for the winter. Drinking hot chocolate by the fireplace, maybe? I don't know. I think this one is very interesting for me. It's definitely out of my comfort zone, but I am happy that I have it in my collection now so I can get some wear out of it. Up next, I have white hot chocolate and rum. So this one is another original blend and it is a gourmand unisex scent. This one is very interesting as well. This one has notes of peppermint, white chocolate, steamed hot chocolate, marshmallows, whipped cream, and rum. So this one I feel like is unisex, but there is a lot of sweetness in it. So I can get away with wearing this and still enjoying it. It's very interesting to me how close Dua can get to the scents because I definitely smell the peppermint and I smell white chocolate. It doesn't smell like milk chocolate. It doesn't smell like that gooey milk chocolate, nothing like that. It really is white chocolate. And there is that boozy note in there, which is really nice as well. I feel like it blends together really, really perfectly. This one, I'm going to get a lot of use of this winter. I like it more than Cherry by the Fire, but I'm not too sure if I would want a full bottle or not. So I'm gonna play around with this one and see what my overall thoughts are. But I definitely think it pulls sweet, but still wearable for men if you don't mind a little sweetness in your fragrance. It's very unique too. I've never smelled anything like this. I feel like the chocolate in this is done a lot better than the chocolate in the high on chocolate, but again, that's just my opinion. And if you wear something like this, you won't smell like anyone else around you, which is pretty cool too. And the last one I have to share with you guys is Strawberry Cream Candy. This one is a original as well, and it is a unisex gourmand that has notes of strawberry puree, butterscotch, cream, vanilla, milk, and musk. This one is a very sweet, fruity scent. So if you aren't a fan of those, you won't like this one, but I really like this one. It doesn't smell like strawberry candy, like the name suggests. It smells more like a fresh strawberry or strawberry puree from Starbucks, maybe but not like a strawberry candy, which is what I was picturing. I was picturing those white and pink candies. I'll leave a picture of them on the screen so you guys know what I'm talking about. That's what I was hoping it would smell like because I love those, but I still really like this one as well, the way that it smells. This one and the white hot chocolate and rum smells so good on my clothes, like days after I've worn it, which I love. This one definitely is up there in my favorites for this haul too. It smells really, really good. If you aren't a fan of sweet scents, I think it definitely would be too much for you because it is a very sweet scent. But still, it's not a sickeningly sweet scent, at least in my opinion. This one is giving me a lot more daytime, spring and summer vibes than winter and fall. So I don't think I'll wear this one too much right now, but whenever we get into the spring season, I will be whipping this one out for sure. And I will be getting a lot of use out of it because I really, really like this one. Still not sure if I want a full bottle because I feel like there's other things that I do like more but we will see. Once I get more use out of this one, I might change my mind. All right, guys, so that wraps up my first do a haul, kind of first impressions, as well as like a little tiny bit of a review, but I haven't worn these scents enough to really form a very strong opinion on lasting power, that kind of stuff, if it projects, I definitely wanna try that out more, but I am interested in trying out some new scents in the future. This is kind of a new type of video for me. I haven't really stepped into the fragrance realm in YouTube before, but if you guys like this video, go ahead, give it a like. You're gonna see some more fragrance content for me soon because I'm going to be doing a video on K. Alley Sense as well. Keep your eyes peeled for a new duo haul in the new year because I probably will be making a, another one to buy that Alexandra Short full size if I like that one better than 
the Vanilla 28, as well as trying some new scents, but I will keep you guys posted on that. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you want to, you can go ahead and leave a like, a comment, or subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.